So again, I apologize. Uh, today's video is going to be really interesting. I'm not going to sound very good. I'm, I'm sick. I said I was sick yesterday. Um, ended up sounding better than I thought I did. But today I'm definitely out of it. Didn't even think I was going to make a video. But uh, I finally was able to go to bed. My fever went away. And I've been thinking this whole time. I was even dreaming about it. About yesterday's Nintendo Direct. And there's like, two specific points I want to get off my mind. Uh, one of them is that it feels like, <clears throat> at least to me, that Nintendo is finally getting third-party support. That, you know, Rockstar, or not this, not so much Rockstar, but I guess like 2K and Bethesda and all this stuff are starting to show people that the Switch is as capable as any other uh, device out there to support these kind of AAA games. I mean, if you think about it, we're getting Doom for crying out loud. And, and Doom's not even like the big announcement, right? That's a little bit of an older game. How about uh, Wolfenstein 2? The new Colossus. That's a game that hasn't even released on other platforms yet. And Switch is getting it. Yes, Switch is getting it later. The decision to make it probably came after they had already been pretty far along. But it's still an important game. Part of uh, this push for Nintendo Switch to be accepted. And that's, that's a point I really want to hit on today. Is I think we've reached a point now. Uh, and I know we're not even past the first year. We have no idea what sales are going to be. We don't know if any of these games are going to sell. That it's time for the rest of the community that has been avoiding Switch, that has been crapping on Switch, that doesn't get the appeal, that doesn't, that thinks anyone that buys it is buying a kitty console, that, uh, that comes up with any reason in the world to trash the system. And I'm not going to pretend that Nintendo fans are innocent. I mean, I'm, I'm probably feeding running, but I mentioned them, but like Landon Legate, as an example on our videos, is always finding a reason, one after another after another, to trash Xbox. And there's a lot of people that do that to Nintendo. <coughs> there's a lot of people that do that to Switch. And I feel like w with all these games coming and with Nintendo's continued output and with the continued positive reception. And no, not everything's perfect with Switch. I get it. Voice chat sucks. Uh, they don't have a full online infrastructure. Uh, universal account system's kind of there, but it's not. You can't use the account on multiple systems. Uh, there's no cloud saving. Yada, yada, yada. All things that might, may or may not ever be addressed. Reality is that the Switch has kind of... Sh like, it, it felt like earlier this year it was just like a, a baby chicken. You know, you have a chick coming out of the egg, and earlier this year, when Switch released, that was the first crack, right? It pecked up the eggshell and cracked it, and you could start to see life coming out of the Switch. And now, here we are, uh, middle of September, just got done with a Direct, had, you know, a, a bunch of things happen, a bunch of games have released, which was like, you know, more cracks in the egg, and I feel like, here we are, middle of September, and the chicken has finally opened the egg, right? The, the, you can now see the chick's head. You're, you're talking about how cute it is. Aw, great. Life has come into existence fully. And that's where the Switch is now. It, it had its initial period. It showed off. It looked good. And now it's in the prove it mode and it's proving it. And it's time to accept Switch as a mainstay platform in the video game industry. And I don't mean accept it in the way that people were kind of forced to accept Wii, right? Like, Wii was selling just so well, people just had to accept it was a thing. And even if they didn't like what it was doing, right? There's a lot of people that didn't like that Wii was popularizing shovelware, was popularizing motion control party games. A lot of people didn't like that, and that's not to say that's all that was on Wii. I loved Wii. There was a lot of great games on Wii. But it's hard to deny it did popularize a lot of genres and a lot of types of games that hadn't been popular uh, for a long time. So Switch isn't like that. Switch instead is popularizing the idea that we don't need to be confined to a single room or a single TV. And it's an idea that just makes a lot of sense, right? In, in the day and age in gaming we are, we should be able to play what we want, when we want, where we want. And that's the way it is with our phone. That's the way it is with other laptops. 
And it's not that way with home consoles, except for Switch. So now the Switch is getting all this big third-party support. It's getting all of the, you know, Nintendo exclusive stuff. It's getting Square Enix making exclusive games. Granted, the games aren't, like, at the level of a Final Fantasy. You know, we're talking, like, Project Octopath Travelers and, and stuff like that. It's still showing dedication from third parties that they are taking the Switch platform very seriously. I mean, Bethesda is clearly taking it seriously. They have three games coming out. Heck, we just learned that Skyrim is actually the special edition version, which some people didn't think the Switch could even run, but it's getting the special edition version. No, there's no mods, and there's no mods planned at this time. Maybe they'll add that in the future. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how much that matters to some people. It doesn't really matter to me. If I want to play mods, I would do it on PC anyways because you, the ability to uh, mod on PC is vastly superior to the mods that you can do on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One anyways. But th there's just this caveat of support coming to Switch, and I, I just feel like it's time to take the chains off and just let the Switch fly free. If it blows up, even more great. If it doesn't, great. But the gaming community now needs to accept the Switch as a serious gamer platform because it, it, people always look for reasons to dismiss things they don't want to succeed or dis dismiss things that uh, upset them or take gaming in a direction people don't want it to go. But it's not like Switch is killing the PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4 is still selling really well. So... I think they can work together. I think PC Gaming, Switch, and PlayStation 4, three platforms, they can work really well together. I think Xbox One can even work into that with the Xbox One X. I feel like Switch needs to be just accepted as a true gaming platform. It's not a system you're buying so you can be like a 3DS owner and, <clears throat> and play these inferior games. No, it's a serious gaming platform. Now, my other point I wanted to hit on and I'm sorry if this sounds rambly. It's really hard for me to think right now. I'm so congested. Um, is that Mario Odyssey bundle. So I understand why people are excited for it. Maybe. Because the bundle costs $379.99. Or $379.99. And as soon as I saw that price, I'm like, wait a second. What's the point of the bundle again? Oh, worry, you get red Joy-Cons. Because you're paying for the game and the included case in the price tag. So it's not even a deal. You're not getting a deal. To call this a bundle is really weird because the Switch costs $299.99 without any games. And for $80, bucks, you can decide what game and what case you want on your own. Maybe you don't want Odyssey with it. Maybe you want... Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe you want Zelda. Maybe you want, you know, whatever other game. So... It, it's not even a deal. It feels like a GameStop bundle, right? Like, it's not even a deal. And the console itself, they didn't do anything cool to it. Yes, they're giving you, like, matte red uh, Joy-Cons instead of neon Joy-Cons, neon red Joy-Cons. But, I mean, so? <laughs> Why couldn't they customize something on the system to make it feel more unique, you know? It, it almost feels like what Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is doing to the Pro Controller is a far better custom job uh, than Super Mario Odyssey is giving to the Switch as a custom thing. I mean, I brought this up several times in the past. I'll bring it up again. Monster Hunter Double Cross in Japan had a Switch bundle that not only was it not, you know, overpriced, it, like, had a fully custom dock. So the dock itself was themed to Monster Hunter, and it's the only time we've seen this happen, and that was a third-party company, so Nintendo can't do that with Odyssey. Uh... I'm, I'm going to just call it what it is. It's lazy. What Nintendo's doing with the Super Mario Odyssey bundle in the United States is lazy. Uh, one, they're not willing to lose any money by bundling the game in at $2.99. Two, uh, what they're giving you with the game and the case is exactly what it would cost if you didn't buy the bundle in the first place. And three, all they're giving you is red Joy-Cons, which for it, it, they're probably going to make those available to purchase separately anyways, just like they did for ARMS and like they did for Splatoon and like they're going to do for pretty much any Joy-Con color out there. They're going to be available to purchase separately. So it's it's a little frustrating that uh, that's the first big bundle we get in the United States is a bundle that isn't even that great of a deal and isn't any cheaper than just not buying that stuff bundled. Um, just my two cents, I guess. But yeah, anyways, 
I am Nathaniel Ruffin Dance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And yes, there will be one more video coming out uh, later today. Uh, it's the next uh, part of our podcast this week. Because um, I'm obviously I can barely talk right now, so there won't be another video, uh, new video made today. But uh, thank you guys, love you, and I'll see you in the next one.